In this video we're going to take a JT4000 Micro from Behringer and set it up for some doorless experiments. We're going to configure a Raspberry Pi, connect the JT4000 Micro to the Raspberry Pi and on that Raspberry Pi we'll have pure data running a sequencer patch. So here we have the Raspberry Pi 3B on the left hand side and the JT4000 Micro from Behringer. I've chosen a 3B because a, they're uh, inexpensive, I picked this up for £27 on uh, eBay uh, and B, it's more than powerful enough for the job at hand and that's to run a pure data patch. With the previously prepared SD card installed, uh, I'm now going to connect up the power, which if we can get it in the right way, that will um, power up the Raspberry Pi. There we go. So having done that, and the uh, Raspberry Pi is powered up, I'm going to connect the JT4000 to the Raspberry Pi with the USB cable. Um, you'll notice I've already got an Ethernet cable plugged into the Raspberry Pi, um, just because I'm going to remotely control this via VNC. Um, I'm going to show you how that's all set up, um, but I want the best, most stable connection, uh, and it's better than over Wi-Fi. Uh, and also on the JT4000, I've got a cable connected into the headphone socket which is going out to the audio interface so I'm recording what's coming out of the JT4000. There you go, all works. So with that all set up, I'm going to move over to my computer and remotely control the Raspberry Pi and install pure data so that I can get these two things talking to one another. Right now over on the computer, I'm going to SSH over onto the Pi. And that's going to allow me to remotely execute commands on the Pi and configure things like VNC so I can actually then take remote control of the desktop. Okay, so with the password inserted, first thing I'm going to do is go and do a sudo space raspi hyphen config command. Now what that's going to do it's going to allow me to um, enter into this configuration setting and then I'm going to first off go in and set up the boot auto login to desktop auto login. Now what that will do is the next time I reboot the Raspberry Pi it will load a graphical user interface or a GUI. Um, and I need to make a few other tweaks so I'm going to change the VNC resolution and change it something so that I can see on my screen. We'll go with 1280 by 1024 and then I'm going to enable VNC as well. Uh, there we go, so that should be taking, yes, it's making those changes. So that's enabled. And then finally I'm going to finish and I will accept a reboot. Right, so now the Raspberry Pi has been rebooted, I'm going to SSH back into it and do an update and upgrade package process. The reason why I do that is because not all the packages are the latest versions, the ones that come off the original build, and they may not be secure, um, or they might not have all the features, they may not work as um, we'd hope they would. So this is always a good good practice to do this early on. So that sudo apt get update um, and then followed by a sudo get upgrade. Now the upgrade um, is going to take some time. I think we're talking 10-15 minutes at least. So what I'll do is I'll fast forward through that process um, but be mindful this is going to take a while to get fully baked your end. So now that's been completed, I'm going to do another reboot. Whilst the Raspberry Pi reboots on my computer, I'm just going to go into VNC Viewer and show you that the VNC server that I'm connecting to is MIDI.local. All of the other settings are the defaults. I'm not going to change anything else, I'm just going to leave it as the defaults. Um, and now 
I'll go in and quickly check that the Raspberry Pi has finished rebooting and to do that I'm just going to send a ping signal to it and there we go I can see I've got an IP address so I'm happy with that. So I can now for the first time connect to the VNC server so I need to put in my username and password to connect to the remote server and there we go we have a desktop and that's the desktop of the Raspberry Pi. So within the Raspberry Pi, I'm going to now install pure data. And that's just a simple process of sudo apt get install pure data as a single word. And um, pure data has not been installed on this previously. So I'm just going to click on yes. And it's going to run through and install the package. And then type sudo pd. So that's opening pure data. And the first thing I need to do, because I've got the JT4000 connected, I just need to set that up as a MIDI output. And that's just the case, because it's the only MIDI device I've got plugged in, is picking from the, the drop down menu. What I'll do next is open up the pure data patch file that I've created previously. I've got this saved on a network attached storage, which is another Raspberry Pi. I'm just going to connect into that, grab the file and copy it locally. I'll make this file available on my website, link will be in the description, um, but also I will include in the description the tutorial that I followed um, to create this patch. Um, it's quite a simple uh, beginner friendly tutorial and I'm still learning pure data so I didn't feel like I'm the best person and the best place person to show others how to use it. So rather than do that I'll make the patch that I've got available available on my website and also um, point you to where you can learn more about pure data. So we're going to open that file, that PD file, and um, it's a very simple patch. It's a generative sequencer. Pretty simple, just going to change one setting quickly um, and then kick it off by pressing the, the toggle switch on at the top. And there you go, it's actually working. This is now playing the JT4000 with nothing else connected. Enjoy! To complete the doorless experiment I've got the JT4000 connected into my modular setup. It's the only source of audio um, but I've got the uh, little synth connected into the Bufaco hex mix and that's got a send and return to Make Noise Mimeophone. The Make Noise Mimeophone is adding some delay and reverb to make this more of a lush, fuller rounded sounding kind of ambient patch. I've really enjoyed this experiment and hope you have too. If you have, please take the time to like and subscribe. And I'm just going to leave this running for a little bit.